Open up your Bibles, please, to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. And we will read verse 38. Daniel chapter 11. And we will read verse 38. We believe that the King James Bible is a perfect, pure Word of God. Because if you don't demand a perfect, pure Bible, then how do you know that the words in the verses that is speaking to you that they're correct. And if they're incorrect, how do you know that the doctrine they're teaching you is correct? That's why we demand a perfect Bible. Now, the reason why we go for the King James Bible rather than all the other modern Bibles is because not only manuscript evidence or doctrinal problems, but here's a major doctrinal problem about modern Bibles. You know, modern scholars will claim there is no major doctrinal issue. That's incorrect. We're going to look at the most popular Bibles, the most top popular Bibles in the market, and then it's going to be likely that the other modern Bibles, they might have the same wording as well. So the most popular ones are the NIV, the English Standard Version. It's also... This one, not as much as popular as before, but still kind of. The New King James Version. And then you also have the New Living Translation as well. So these are really popular Bibles in the market. Okay, we're going to look at Daniel chapter 11 and verse 38. I want your other hands to go to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 2. So, does your Bible teach that Satan is God? Does your Bible teach that Satan is God? Apparently, it seems to do that. So, we're going to look at 2 Samuel chapter 22. And we will read verse 2. So, the Bible says, And he said, The Lord is my rock and my what? Fortress. So, we do know this. The Lord God Almighty, He's our fortress. That's why we sing, a mighty fortress is our God, correct? All right, now look at Daniel chapter 11 and verse 38. The Bible never called this being a fortress, except your kind of Bible. Daniel chapter 11, verse 38. Now, what does the King James Bible say? The King James Bible says, but in his estate shall he honor the God of who? Forces. Forces. All right. That's why we don't believe in that Star Wars nonsense, may the force be with you, because we know that's demonic. That is all New Age garbage. That is all kinds of garbage going on in conspiracies nowadays. This is force. So you notice right here what the Bible says is that notice why it said capital G. Do you know why it says capital G? Because there is no cap... Our God is no capital G of forces. But there is one God that is a capital G of forces. And that's Satan right here. Now, look what the new Bible say. It, May the force be with you. So Satan hides that. He successfully hides that demonic thing that you can find there. And then he successfully hides the force and replaces it with this word, fortresses. You know what Bibles say, God of fortresses? You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. It is the NIV, the ESV, the NASB, and the New King James Version. It's supposed to be a new translation of your King James Bible, ain't it? But the King James Bible never called it the devil one time, referred to him as a fortress. Especially the hymns we sing, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Uh, look what Satan wants to do. He wants to hide himself, may the force be with you, and replace himself with God Almighty. Let's also look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And remember, folks, uh, different Bibles basically teach the same things, like those scholars said. I mean, these guys are scholars. They know what they're talking about, right? Matthew chapter 16. You know, it, come on. If you're a liberal and a Muslim, do you know how many times they accuse you Christians for having so many different translations? Over 200 translations? Come on, man. So you don't think that's a major problem now? And you pretend those, those differences don't exist. Matthew chapter 16, we're going to look at verse 18 and verse 23. Who is the church founded upon? Peter or Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the rock, yes? Yep. All right, we're going to look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And keep your hand at Matthew chapter 16. The Bible says that spiritual rock 
was who? That rock was Christ. So Jesus Christ is a rock. But notice in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Now what does the King James Bible say? It never calls Peter the rock. It never did. Matthew 16, 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, one person, and upon this rock, see, comma, and, separated, upon this rock I will build my church. Now we know that this rock is Jesus Christ. So Jesus was going, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. How do you know that? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 10 told you, Jesus is that rock. Well, I don't believe that. How can he do that? That's very simple. He said, destroy this temple. Yeah. In three days I will raise it up. And then the people thought, oh, he's referring to a temple out there. Yeah. So Jesus was going temple out there when he said this temple. He meant this temple. Neither when he said rock, he wasn't pointing at Peter. You're the rock. He meant this rock. So that's not hard to believe. But anyways, there's no... All the verses show Jesus is the rock anyway. Even Peter said that, 1 Peter chapter 2. Now... Look what your modern Bible says. Your modern Bibles, what they call Peter, is that they actually say, Peter the rock. That's what they say. They even have one in parentheses, this means rock, after Peter. So now they say, Peter is the rock. Okay, that's a problem. Look at verse 23. What did Jesus Christ call Peter? Look at verse 23. He said, Get thee behind me who? Satan. Oh, so you got a church that's built upon the devil. Oh, my goodness, not only, oh, it's not a Catholic Bible, it's not a Catholic Bible, sure it's a Catholic Bible, man, you teach this kind of Catholic doctrine, not only that, you got the devil as the rock of your church, Christian, Protestant, anti-Catholic church, you, you even have this, this is your founder, I guess, alright, let's look at another one, 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4, this is found at the New Living Translation, and not only that, the NIV, what are they doing? Here's another thing I want to add. These modern translators, they try to get away with the errors in their verses by putting footnotes. And by putting footnotes, they said, well, it could mean that, but it can also mean another thing. That way they can get away with it. You know why? Because they're sick and tired of King James Bible believers yeah. pointing out errors in the verses. So they put those footnotes in to save their lives. We're, you're going to find out those footnotes actually caused more problems for them. You know what the NIV did? They were safe on this one, but they put in the footnote right here. I can't believe it. They put in the footnote right here, Peter means rock. That's what they put in the footnote right there. I mean, for crying out loud, what are you doing, man? All right, let's look at 2 Corinthians 4, and let's also look at Ephesians 3. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I mean, you don't think there's a satanic conspiracy going on with modern Bibles? This is just a theory, ain't it? No. Come on now. Come on now. Aren't you looking at the verse? Aren't you looking at the verse? All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. All right, now in Ephesians chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 21. All right, there's a hymn book. There's a hymn that goes... God of ages past. There's a title like that. God of ages past. And that is our God. Even in this church age, He is the God of this church age. God is... All time goes under God. Every age. Because He's Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. All time is in His hand. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 21. The Bible says, Unto Him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout what? All ages. All, right? all ages under His control. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. What does the Bible say about Satan? In whom the God of this what? Yes. World. All right. Now God is a God of ages. And there's a hymn on that one. You know what the modern Bible says? In whom the God of this age. God of this age. No, sir. Satan's not in control. It's the Lord God himself. He's Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. But now that you got God of this age, huh? And look at right here. The NIV has this translation, and the New King James Version also has this translation. Satan wants to be God ever since the beginning. I want to be like the Most High. I will sit upon the sides of the north. All right, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy 13, uh, 32, excuse me. Deuteronomy 32, and we will read verse 14, uh, 17, excuse me. Deuteronomy 32. 
And we will read verse 17. Now, here's a little bit more subtle wording, all right? He's going to put a little more subtle wording. That way people won't catch it. But Satan, he wants to get God's glory even if it, there's a little bit of allowance. Even if there's a little bit of a slip hole and allowance. Do you think Satan will not grab that? Of course he will grab that. All right? So it doesn't have to be clear cut. It can be something where he can find a loophole where you will allow it. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we will read verse 17. What does the King James Bible say? The King James Bible says, They sacrificed unto devils, not to who? God. God. All right, so the King James Bible says that these people, they were sacrificing to devils, not to God. All right? So they were... So they were directing their sacrifices to devils. They weren't directing their sacrifices to God. You know what the modern Bible says? I don't know what. They said in Deuteronomy 32 verse 17, they said right here, they sacrificed unto demons who were not God. So that phrase sounds like they're saying there are demons who can be God. It's only condemning a group of demons who were not God. Why do you have to put that together like that? Is that sounding like as if you're allowing there's a group of demons that can be God then? Yeah. Isn't that what Satan did back at Genesis chapter 3? Yeah. Ye shall be as what? God. Gods. So here's a problem right here. So I write this with a question mark. So demons who are not God, that's what we're condemning. Okay, so then are you saying there can be demons who can be God? Apparently yes, because in one of their modern Bibles it says, Gods they knew not with a capital G. Whoa. That's found at the JPS Tanakh 1917. And then NL, uh, this, this phrase about demons who are not God, which were not God, etc., etc., can be found at the New Living Translation, NASB, and God's Word Translation. What in the world? What in the world, man? God's Word, God's word Translation. That ain't God's Word, man. If God's, gonna, God's not going to allow this. All right, let's look at Isaiah 14, probably the most popular and the most infamous one. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14, and we will read verse 12. This one is just a plain as a nose on your face. You can't go around this. Once you have Isaiah 14, 12, I want you to go to Revelation chapter 22. I want you to go to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, Revelation chapter 22. So that's the last book of Revelation. Revelation 22, 2 Peter 1, and Isaiah chapter 14. All right, you know what Albert Pike, those elites, what they recognize Lucifer as? They recognize Lucifer as the morning star. You know, that's Satan replacing God's deity. But who is the morning star? We will look at Revelation chapter 22. And we will read verse 16. There's a song. I mean, the hymns even know this. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. So that is Jesus Christ himself. Look at Revelation chapter 22. The devil, he's just slapping our hymns that we sing, yeah. and he's slapping the verses that we read from. That's why you get new songs, contemporary music to replace the old-fashioned hymns, new Bibles to replace the old-fashioned Bible, King James. Look at Revelation 22, 16. It says, I, Jesus, and who is he? I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and what? Morning, Morning star. star. All right, look at Isaiah 14, 12. What does the Bible say? How art thou fallen from heaven, O who? Lucifer. Lucifer. Okay, so this guy is Lucifer. Okay, good guy or bad guy? Uh, bad guy, all right? Duh, all right? But even little kids know that. Is Lucifer a good guy? No. But apparently these guys who have PhDs, DDs, and T, PhDs and knows Hebrew and Greek backwards and forwards and know Latin, Greek, and so many different translations. These guys, they don't have the education of a three-year-old. And they call Satan, they said, How art thou fallen from heaven or what? Morning star. What in the world, man? What in the world? Why would you call Lucifer the morning star when that's supposed to be Jesus Christ? Not only that, well, maybe the... Uh, 
The other translation can make it better, right? The ESV, the ESV. Well, look at 2 Peter chapter 1. And we will read verse 19. So the NIV says, Morning Star. Yeah. We're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Now, I'm not sure if they're still around, but there's a Christian television network, if they're still around, called Daystar Network. And that's referring to, you know, Jesus Christ. They're supposed to be referring to Jesus Christ. This is like God's network. There's even a song that goes, Day star shine down upon me. Let your light shine through me in the night. So that is referring to Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Notice we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the what? Day, day star arise in your hearts. Okay, so Jesus Christ, He is the morning star. And because day star is synonymous with this anyway, it's obvious. He's also the day star. The ESV says in Isaiah 14.12, how you are fallen, O day star. And this is the Bible that James White recommends very highly. And John MacArthur, who once criticized the NIV, now he puts his name on, under the ESV. Like, that makes it any better. You see this, man? What the devil's doing? What the devil's doing? There's nothing, there's nothing satanic about this, folks. Nothing satanic. Remember that, all right? Nothing satanic. Yeah. This is a conspiracy theory. Yeah. This is a conspiracy theory. Remember that. <laughs> all right, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. See, they think it's only Isaiah 14 out of two modern translations. Look at this, folks. I showed you even from the New King James Version, which supposedly shares the same manuscripts as the King James Bible, according to Dr. James White. I mean, he must know what he's talking about. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we will read verse 7. All right, now, this is nuts, okay? I, I can't believe this modern Bible. You wouldn't believe which modern Bible made this dumb mistake. Not even the, the most obvious errors of the modern Bibles would follow this particular modern version. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We will read verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity, right? So that's the Antichrist. All right, the context is who? The Antichrist. All right, remember that. It's talking about that guy. Doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Notice your King James Bible puts that until he be taken out of the way as a lower H, yes? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So notice that the 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it's not referring to Jesus Christ or God or the, or the Holy Spirit. It's a lower H. The context is in the mystery of iniquity. So the Antichrist. So if this is the Antichrist, guess what? The NIV didn't make this mistake. The other modern versions didn't make this mistake. The Bible that supposedly shares the same manuscripts as your King James Bible capitalizes this one as capital H, he, because they think that's referring to the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, oh, this is not end time conspiracy. This is not, look what the devil's preparing. A one world government, one world religion in Protestant, Christian, anti-Catholic churches. Let's look at Daniel 11. I'm not done yet. Look at Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. Daniel 11, 37. I don't want people online to misunderstand me as being sarcastic and mean, but the reason why I'm doing that is because these guys are deceiving people out there, pretending with their high flaunty education, with their Greek and Hebrew nonsense, and they, they act like spiritual gurus that you can depend upon. These guys know what they're talking about. That sounds very smart, and then you will follow these guys. And they poke fun at, at King James only Bible believers as they didn't study as much like we did. We know what we're talking about. These guys are going bonkers over conspiracy theories. Like that. That's why I make fun of them. Because what they're doing is that they're trying to belittle people warning about this kind of stuff. So isn't it fair that I belittle them in return? Notice right here, the Bible says this, Neither shall he, the Antichrist, regard who? The God of his fathers. That's very obvious in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37. 
the Antichrist, notice of his fathers, right? right yeah. So that shows that the Antichrist, his heritage is who? Well, you'll notice capital G, God, yeah. singular, of his fathers. Yeah. And Daniel, who is the true God during Daniel's time period? The Jews. Yeah. So that's why the Antichrist, he will come out as a Jew. Oh, why will he do that, Pastor? Because the Christ, Jesus Christ, was a Jew. So the Antichrist will come out as a Jew. So this Antichrist comes out as a Jew, and this is very obvious. He's going to reject the God, all right? That's obvious, all right? He's going to definitely reject the God of his fathers, okay? You know what the modern translations say? They, they, they replace the true God with this. Gods. Gods. Plural. Even plural. Not just singular, but plural. <laughs> this is found at the NIV, the NLT, the ESV, and the New King James Version. But the New King James Version footnote says, okay, so the New King James Version, it doesn't say gods. They put the correct word, right? So then they're like, oh, this is safe. They'll put like a singular. But their footnote caused them the problem. They said, or gods. Now listen, this is a problem, don't you think? They just said it doesn't matter if it's a true God or if it's a false God. It doesn't matter at all. Pick and choose. That's even more dangerous, ain't it? That's even more dangerous. Oh, by the way, this New King James Version in the footnote, they, they know this problem. So then they'll say, or it could be lower he. But that just makes it worse. Because they're saying pick and choose which God that you would prefer then. See, this footnote doesn't save your life. It causes inconsistency more and more contradictions. Yeah. If you don't believe me, I encourage you to look up the footnotes and the verses. You know why they will give a different interpretation? Because they know somebody out there will point out an obvious flaw in their verse. Yeah. So they think the footnote saves their life. No, that's not what it does. What it does is you just admitted right there, pick and choose. It doesn't matter which interpretation you want. Pick and choose which God that you want, folks. It doesn't matter. The true God or the false God. Take your pick. Right? That's the kind of society that we live in today. Doesn't matter which God you worship. Wow. New world, man. New world order, one world government, one world religion, one world Bible. You know why? Because all 200 different versions are the same Bible. Let's everyone in the world use whatever Bible you want because it's all one world. They're all the same.